Okay, so today we're going to talk about logistic regression uh, using Stata, and we're going to assume that you kind of know why you're using logistic regression and why you're not using OLS regression. And uh, we're going to be using a data set, actually, uh, that is provided in the Stata website that you can just download by using the command um, in the syntax that we provided you, and you just highlight it and run do. And the data set that you that pops up is this health data that looks at low birth weight. And you can see here that one of the variables, the low variable, is a dichotomous variable of when or not a baby's born that's under 2,500 grams, so a pretty low birth weight. And let's say we're interested in understanding the kind of uh, variables that um, increase the odd ratios of one having uh, low birth rate and maybe a particular variable that we might want to look at is just uh, the function of age and to run uh, a basic logistic regression uh, you just type in logistic then you type in the name of the dependent variable uh, which is low uh, and then you put in the predictors which we have the first one is age you can just highlight it and click on the do And so uh, looking here at the output table, we have first off our uh, list of coefficients, and we see that there's only one. And age here has a 0.95 odd ratios impact on the likelihood of having a low birth weight. And that means um, that as you get older, um, the percentage change is a 5% decrease change of the odds ratio of having a low birth weight. So young people, very young people who are having kids, uh, are, have a higher probability of, uh, a higher odds of having a low birth weight baby. Uh, if you look here, it's at a P of almost, almost insignificant, but still significant. Um, what else we have here? We have some fit statistics. We have the log ratios chi-square. Um, which is the null hypo hypothesis in the situation is that the coefficients are zero and we see that this is significant um, at a 0 0.096 level and then we have a pseudo R square which is supposed to kind of give us reference to an R square in OLOS but it's not actually an R square in that sense uh, it's hard to interpret an R square a pseudo R square in logistic regression um, because it doesn't explain the amount of variance it's just kind of a, a measure that's used um, so I'll let your TA tell you whether or not this is a good fit or not. So let's say now we want to add another variable. Uh, let's do a smoke variable, which is a dichotomous variable where zero is not smoking, one is smoking. Uh, so just to add that other predictor, just like o OLOS, we just add a new variable. So logistic low age smoke, and we click on do. And uh, we see that age is no longer significant. Uh, and but the odd ratios for smoking is so it seems like if you are smoking it increases your odd ratios by 99% uh, and that is a significant effect so smoking seems to be an important thing and if you look at your pseudo R square you can actually see that it improved even though it's hard to tell you how much it improved you can see that uh, it did go from 0 0.0118 to 0 0.0315 and that's basically because just like in ordinary least squares, uh, the more variables you add to a model, the better uh, your R-square gets. And so the similar logic applies in logistic regression. Let's add another variable. Let's say we want to look at race. And um, race is a discrete variable where 1 is white, 2 is black, and 3 is other. And Stata has this neat command where you can actually create a dichotomous variable on the fly. If you type in xi and um, uh, colon and then type in logistic low age smoke and then if you type in i dot in front of the variable that you want to make dichotomous, it's going to create three variables that's going to be run in the model. And the first category is going to be the reference category. Um, so let me highlight this just to show you what happens. Click on do. So. Um, our age is still insignificant. Our smoke is uh, kind of increased impact. And if you look at blacks, you see that, which is the race two category, they have a 2.74 times greater odd ratios than whites and having a low birth weight baby. And then you look at race three category, um, 
which is the other category, and they have a 2.87 times greater odds ratio of having a low birth weight. And that's also, both of these are significant. And our pseudo R square is improving as well. And uh, if, you, if you look at the syntax that we provide along with this video, you'll notice that the next model that we run uh, includes the same variables that I just discussed, in addition to this PT1 variable, which is just a variable about premature labor history. So the, you can run it, and you can see what effect that has on the odd ratios in relative terms to the other predictors that we've li listed. You notice here that Stata provides this automatically with an odds ratio, because this is more easy to interpret. Um, but if you were interested in the actual uh, unexponentiated coefficients, uh, you can just type in uh, the model, and then you can type in comma, and type in COEF, and that will give us a coefficient. As I've said, I think, a couple times, the comma is always an option to a command. So uh, a, an option within logistic command is to give the coefficients instead of the log ratios. So if you highlight this, you see that these are in coefficient terms um, instead of odd ratios. Uh, one neat thing you can do actually with um, Stata that I think we did with the ordinary least square example we showed last week is that you can actually, using the predictors that you've listed in the last model that you run, you can actually predict for the respondents what their probability would be for having a low birth weight baby given you know the uh, predictors that you ran so if you type in predict and tell S uh, Stata to create this new variable called prop low it's gonna just basically create a variable that will have the probability of having a low birth weight for each respondent and you can just click on do and then if you look at the data itself and you run to the very end of the data set you'll see a new variable and you'll see the prob low variable will give us a corresponding probability for each respondent. So this person had a 33% chance of having a low birth weight baby, whereas this second respondent had a less uh, prob lower probability given their uh, characteristics in terms of the predictor variables. And so the next thing we do here, um, it, which is just good practice, is after you've run a model, whether it's logistic or ordinary least squares, is to examine whether or not um, the error terms are of the model, the residuals, whether or not they're random, and whether or not they're correlated with the independent variables that you've listed. And, and one of the assumptions, and we'll talk about assumptions later on uh, with these models, is that the error is random and that there shouldn't be any relationship between a particular predictor and the error term. So to do that, uh, first we're going to create uh, a residual term, basically look at um, predict the residual for each respondent. And uh, we, if we put the comma option and type in our standard it's going to give us a standardized um, residual so kind of giving us a standardized score of that residual uh, and then we're going to look and do a correlation of that residual to particular continuous variables now it has to be continuous if you can do a correlation and we basically want to know we want to confirm that the residuals are not correlated significantly to continuous variables that we've listed. So age, for instance, and also the history of premature labor. We want that to be insignificant to the residuals that we've created. Um, so let's go ahead and run these first two things. And if we were to look at the browser, we would see that Stata created a new variable. Um, and it then ran a, basically a correlation matrix over age and this uh, history variable with residuals and you'll notice that age is has a very low correlation with residuals which is great um, and it's the significance is 0 0.673 which is uh, pretty high so we can it's not significant and I don't know if I clarified this but the first uh, number here is the correlation and the second number is the significance and then our labor variable has a correlation even lower of 0 0.01, so which is really low, 
and that's the significance is at 0.797. So as long as it's above uh, 0.1 or 0.05, you're in good shape. And we don't have to worry about it. So that's one way of checking whether or not the residuals are uncorrelated with your predictors. You can also visually inspect the data, and that's why we have the scatter plot commands listed out. Scatter residual and age. Uh, if we highlight that and run it, we want to see that there's no relationship. And as you can see, it looks pretty randomly distributed. These are all the errors of, of the model in respects to age. And you see that there's no line um, of any kind. So that's good. We want it to be randomly distributed. Um, we also have a scatter command for residuals and the labor variable. And we'll let you guys run that. And you can inspect the data there too. But it should also look pretty random. And if it isn't random, then you need to get rid of that variable or... Um, think of using a different variable or think about what is missing in your model. We'll talk more about when those assumptions are violated, what you can do about it in another video. But that's the basics of logistic regression, the commands that you run, and how you interpret the tables.